the Western world has been redefined and reframed by the Enlightenment, which is strongly influenced by Darwinistic thought that removes the role of the creator from our worldview. As a result of that, they see religious belief of any kind, any kind of faith-based belief, or belief in the afterlife or the supernatural, or creation, let alone new creation, they see it as superstitious and contrary to a scientific worldview. Not taking into account that Darwinism itself is contrary to a scientific worldview from what we know about recombinant DNA and so forth. And in the second law of thermodynamics, Darwinism itself is easily challengeable as being unscientific. Nonetheless, they have bought into this. You'll find something curiously, for, for instance, in Great Britain, most of the Christian unions at university, the student members of the Christian unions tend to be science, mathematics, and engineering students. A disproportionately large number are from technical backgrounds, what in the United States is called STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. The others consider it to be non-scientific. Well, this is journalism. They're largely non-scientists. They're people with no scientific background who subscribe to the worldview put across by Darwinism. Darwinism itself is in turmoil in the scientific <coughs> community because information science tells us that information, highly coded information, does not come from a vacuum. But people who are non-scientists are unaware of this, and they're unaware of the political battle within the realm of the scientific community itself. So they're entirely prejudiced by this Darwinistically influenced worldview of a, a post-Judeo-Christian society. Now, as for the idea of religion and teaching moral values, again, the gospel of Jesus is different than any religion. Judaism was the only religion that God ordained. And he used Judaism to teach that the law cannot save. It had a sacrificial <coughs> system of atonement to compensate for the fact or to make atonement for the fact that the Hebrews could not keep the rest of the law. The law was given to prepare the way for the Messiah who did keep the law or who would keep the law and fulfill the law and then atone for the fact with his perfect atonement that the rest of us could not. So the Judeo-Christian worldview understood biblically is quite different than other religions. In other words, religions give some notion of salvation by works, while the gospel says we do works because we've been saved, not in order to get saved. The works we do are the result of our salvation, which is a free gift. It is not what we do to obtain salvation. You can't, by definition, obtain a free gift. Additionally, religion is always man trying to reach God or the concept of God, while the gospel is, of course, God trying to reach man in the person of the Messiah. Religion is a blind faith. You need something to deal with the unknown, deal with your fear of death, deal with what you can't explain, deal with the creation and why it came about. It's a blind faith. The scriptures are not a blind faith. The Hebrew prophet Isaiah said, come let us reason together, says the Lord. <coughs> it's predicated upon reason. God wants to reason with man about man's sin and about how man has failed to fulfill the purpose of his existence, to have fellowship with God in love and in truth and in righteousness. Thus, we see the second difference between religion and the gospel is Paul says our faith is reasonable. Religion is not reasonable. The claims of Mormonism, the claims of Hinduism, of Islam, they're not intellectually reasonable. To believe a pedophile like Muhammad, who the Hadith says was a pedophile, is the greatest prophet of, of God, is, is ridiculous. To, to believe that, that it gets dark at night because the sun becomes tired and sets into a muddy pit, this is absurd. It's not reasonable to believe in Islam. It's not reasonable to believe the doctrines and covenants of Mormonism, that there's Quakers living on the moon or things of this nature. It's absurd. It's not reasonable to believe in the claims of Hinduism. 
Now let's understand something. It has only been the Judeo-Christian world that has created social justice as a result of the belief system. Only the Judeo-Christian world. The Torah distinguished the ancient Hebrews from the other peoples of the ancient Near East in a number of ways. Literacy was for everybody in the Hebrew world. The Levites had to make every make sure every Jew could read the Torah, the law of God. That was not true in the pagan world. Literacy was only for the elite, for the aristocracy, the royalty, the pagan priesthoods, the nobility, military commanders, but not for everybody. Uh, much higher standards of education, public health, and social justice among the Hebrews because of their belief in the one true God. This became transplanted into the church. Now, of course, when the church deviated away from its Hebraic origins and Hellenized, it embraced social injustice. But following the Reformation, for all of the mistakes and faults of the Reformation, social injustice began to increase, ultimately climaxing with things like the abolitionist movement. Uh, it's only the Judeo-Christian world that has engendered a higher degree of social justice, public morality, and ultimately democratic institutions. The kind of democracy that existed in ancient Greece was really a form of aristocracy. There was democracy for the wealthy, not for the ordinary people. You had a 25% slave population. However, the founders of parliamentary democracy in Britain and the founding fathers of the United States were strongly again influenced by Judeo-Christian biblical principles. You did not see democracy emerging in the Islamic world. You did not see democracy emerging in the Buddhist world or the Hindu world or the Taoist world. Even philosophically, Confucius basically looked for a benevolent dictator as the ideal form of government, nothing democratic. The most you could hope for was a benevolent form of dictator. Uh, it was the Judeo-Christian worldview that came from the Judeo-Christian scriptures that has created the highest sense of social justice and the highest sense of personal freedom, democratic liberty. You do not find this in other religions. You do not find it in other religions. The growth of Christianity in much of Asia today is a direct result of that, a direct result. Uh, it was the growth of Pentecostalism in Latin America that stopped liberation theology and communism uh, to a large degree. Uh, again, people abandoning Roman Catholicism in favor of scriptural Christianity throughout Latin America. Remember, there were papal encyclicals by Pope Pius IX condemning democracy, saying it was not a form of government the church favored. They did not want that. The Catholic Church did not want that. The Catholic Church wanted what they always had a papal dictatorship or a political dictatorship that worked in tandem with the papacy. No, it is only scriptural Christianity. That is the Judeo-Christian worldview fundamentally predicated on scriptural principles that gave rise to democratic institutions and high standards of social justice where you have the notion of equality under the law. But once you turn your back on these presuppositional beliefs of the framers of the Constitution, the founders of parliamentary democracy, etc., for all of their own mistakes and failures, granted, uh, democracy is going to decrease, and it's happening. You've got crooked politicians ruling by fiat, by executive orders. Congress isn't making law, crooked politicians are just inventing the laws as they go along, inventing treaties. We've seen this with the present administration in Washington, Obama, unfortunately. An attack on democracy, an attack on the Constitution. Well, why would he do that? Because he's anti-Judeo-Christian. He panthers to Islam left and right. But his trying to force the homosexual agenda on Jews and Christians, his war against conservative evangelical chaplains in the, in, in the military, he's, he's, he's anti-Christian in any biblical sense of the word. Now, if you're a, a liberation theologian, if you're somebody who perverts some version of, 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 of Protestantism into a political agenda, like Al Sharpton or, or Jesse Jackson, 
and you simply use religion as, or misuse religion as a propaganda tool, that's fine with them. But it's not fine if you uphold the actual biblical principles. Having said that, as we pointed out in previous broadcasts, the same was true on the right. Some of the actions of the late Jerry Falwell and others are indefensible, what they've done. Embracing an antichrist like Sun Young Moon, calling him an unsung hero simply because they agreed with his politics and taking money from him. This is unfortunate. We've talked about this before. This relates to something called the leaven of Herod, which we're going to be doing a teaching on in the near future. Nonetheless, let's understand this further. The freedom and the highest standards of social justice and democratic institutions you see in the Western world are directly influenced by a Judeo-Christian worldview deriving from Scripture. There have been perversions of it, such as Calvinism, which supported the institution of slavery, in many cases, and of course of Roman Catholicism, Eastern Orthodoxy, etc., perversions of it. But pure biblical faith, pure biblical faith, has done more to engender and ferment the development of higher standards of social justice and personal freedom and democratic liberty, ultimately, than any other religion. You do not find that kind of a history in Islam, Buddhism, or Hinduism. Neither do you find it in atheism or the non-theism of progressivists. When you look at people who did not have a scriptural worldview, who rejected the place of God and faith in God completely, what you wound up with was a Stalin or a Mao. You wound up with someone who was no better and little different than what Hitler did. Purveyors of genocide, as Stalin was, as Mao was. Mao killed 40 million people. Stalin killed 50 million people uh, in the name of atheism. One of the lies of the progressivist idiocracy is more people are killed in the name of religion than anything else. <laughs> no, no, no. More people have been killed in the name of non-belief, of atheism, than anything else. Stalin and Mao killed far more people. Add to this Kim Il-sung. Add to this Nikolai Ceausescu. Add to this one communist dictator after another. More people have been killed in the name of atheism than in the name of theism. <coughs> Such is it. But do not expect the liberal idiocracy to get this. They're too ignorant, they're too arrogant, and they are spiritually blinded. My name is Jacob Prash. Thank you for your question. God bless. Blessings to your friends. Greetings of Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in the TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering uh, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kendall and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kendall. Kendall. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. First being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen.
will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available in the Memorial Catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.